The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the December 14th. Wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Traders at Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating. To you and I, just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I want you to know how grateful I am for your presence here and, more importantly, that I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. 877-927-6648, internationally, 727-445-1044. Of course, you can reach out to us by email, steve at tfnn.com inside the Tiger's Den. I'll take all the pings I can get. One ping, Vasily. Uh, but what movie is that from? So let's go ahead and get this show started, folks. Of course, this is Wonderful Wednesday, and this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got flat markets for the most part. The Dow is off two points. The S&P is off one. The NDX 100 up 11 points. The uh, NASDAQ composite is flat. Russell 2000 is down nine points. Semiconductor index up one. New York Stock Exchange, Wolves for 5,000. Both of those are trading lower, about 27 and 20 points, respectively. Gold's up three and a half bucks. Silver's up 20 pence, uh, pence or cents, really. Uh, Light Sweet Crude is back $1.16, $51.82. So there's plenty of things for us to look at, but we really shouldn't anticipate a whole heck of a lot to occur inside the market. We've got the FOMC going to release the uh, minutes, uh, not the minutes, going to release a statement, right, at about 2 p.m. So it'll be red, uh, you know, so we'll know what that says. We'll see an initial market reaction. Then we've got Janet Yellen uh, giving a uh, doing a, uh, a news conference. I believe that begins at around 2.30. So by about 3.30 in the afternoon, we'll probably, not probably, we should understand exactly how the market is interpreting every word that she says, every word that is shared with us. And, you know, what you and I might like to do is try to figure out, you know, are there any clues inside the market? And I don't know that there there's some clues in some areas. We don't know if those are false clues just yet. Uh, so I think that what we should do is first answer any questions that you have. So send me an email. I'm going to pull it up. And we're going to try to answer that question. And then same thing, news call, you know, callers, we're going to go ahead and answer all those questions. Otherwise, what we can do is look at individual stocks. But we'll look at the indices and try to understand levels of support or levels of resistance. That way, depending on the way that the market uh, responds, then you can act accordingly. So how does that sound out there? Of course, I don't know how that sounds or not, but I think it's probably the prudent thing to uh, do. Because there aren't a lot of clues. If we're looking at the currency market, looking for some big fluctuations, we don't really have them. We see the U.S. dollar index back about 22 cents right now, trading out at about 100. You know, not really that big of a deal. Really been trading uh, sideways-ish uh, since uh, uh a month ago, November 14th. Today is what, December 14th? Um, so we're trading just slightly above the close of that. Um, so nothing big out there. If I look in uh, Euro land out here, um, you know, nothing substantial here other than the downtrend that it's in. So there's no reason to think that that is over. But nothing really huge today, nothing at 110 in the afternoon, currency wise, that gives us a clue. The Japanese yen, which might be a, uh, a real clue, which could give us a real clue, is in essence flat right now. You know, what we do know about the uh, Japanese uh, yen futures, Japanese or the disc in here, this is the currency pair. We know that it's made a nice 0.618 retracement. 
So if you trade the currency pair, it's trading at about 115.10. Any significant move over the high from just a few days ago, that's the high from December 12th, that would then suggest that it's going to go ahead and continue to weaken against the U.S. dollar and head up into the 119.97 area. We don't have to get right to the pip out here, but that, in essence, would be the target. Otherwise, uh, you this would be the area where you would expect to see some type of retracement. So the yen would get stronger out there. So we'll and and the in the what this will do what the what this currency pair will uh, harbor is either confirmation that the 30-year Treasury has formed a, a bottom. If we take a look at the uh, current uh, contract out here, we're going to notice that as price was traveling lower just a few days ago, a few short days ago, December the 12th, that uh, what the 30-year uh, Treasury chart formed on that candle was a nice little hammer. Now, hammers at the end of a pattern, pattern meaning the market moving lower, are significant in that they signal that the market is hammering out a bottom. That is a, a nice hammer candle that had follow through yesterday even though it was doji style uh, we do have as you can see some follow through today but it's all going to really mess so what does that mean well there is one level of support remember i said we should really look for levels of support or resistance and that level of support inside of uh, the 30-year uh, treasury now ought to be the low from december 12th 147 and point uh, one out there. So if we see a move below that 136, if we see a move below that, a close below that, well, if you're long, you're wrong. It's just that simple out here. You've got a nice little hammer can on a weekly basis. I don't know. It's only Wednesday, but what do we have going on? We have a piercing candle on a, a weekly chart. But, of course, this week doesn't end till Friday out here. But we can see, we can detect that uh, the 30-year Treasury appears to be forming a bottom. But it really does need that uh, yen, that needs the yen, the yen, yen futures, whichever the currency pair. It really needs it to signal that it wants to get stronger, not weaker. Now, inside of uh, Goldilocks uh, Ville out here, we really just have sideways-ish market out here, so it's not giving us a big clue. Uh, if it were giving us a clue, what would that clue be? Well, I really should try. Let me see if I can get this to work out here. Uh, that's not going to work. That's not what I wanted to show you. Let me just switch over there. This might work, although it has been picking up the last day. Yeah, it's not. But what I can say is right at about 11.59, is that oscillator on change line? We're trading at 11.63, so it's just slightly above the uh, zero uh, level, uh, or it's just slightly turned up, is what I really should say. So it's got to give us a, a little bit of a signal that it wants to try to uh, form a uh, bottom out here. But we're going to know soon enough. We'll know by the end of the uh, day. Uh, so currency wise, not a lot of clues out here. Treasury bonds have spoken. The question is, are they, have they spoken three days ago and given us the signal that uh, we were looking for? And only time will tell. So we get back from this break. Let's go take a look at some of the indices. I'll check in, see if there's any emails that have come through. Some of the indices, levels of support, levels of resistance, so that you can plan accordingly. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, again, flat market, Dow's down four. S&P is off a point. Let's go out to Martinez, California to uh, speak with uh, Brent. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How's your morning going? Doing well, Steve. It's been a long time since we talked. How you been? I've been doing very good. Thank you. <laughs> it's great to talk to you every day. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Good to, good to hear your voice. Now, Harmony Gold, HMY is a ticker symbol that you are calling about. And I'm sure we have many listeners and viewers out here that also want to know what you're doing with Harmony Gold or what you're taking a look at. I was just going to let you quickly know I did sell my positions on Monday of, of uh, <clears throat> Noble and Rig because they had made such big moves. I had Rig, I bought at 880 and got out at 1620, so that was almost 100% gain. And then uh, Noble, I had at 525 and sold in the eight. So that to me was kind of a gift that was given to me that day when I had the big, uh, yeah. big spike up. But, uh, so yeah, so, harmony, so congrats con congrats on that. But so you you are you uh, so you, you're out of those. You took your profits. That's great. Are you looking to get back into those positions? I, I How are you going? On, on Noble, if it can go back, I think it has a chance to go back and close that gap. Be honest with you. And if it does that, that's where I would be interested. Otherwise, I'll probably just let Got it go it. for the moment. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. I, I so, did, so uh, on Harmony, I did buy it this morning at. Uh, it's weird because it was actually down a little bit this morning. So I put in an order I bought at uh, 214. I thought I had a decent sign of strength yesterday, and, and uh, I just, uh, it's been kind of sitting down here towards the bottom, but I just, uh, I'm taking a shot with it. Yeah. So, you know, in the case of Harmony, uh, probably the the key. So first, uh, again, congrats on those uh, trades and Noble and uh, Rig out there. That's a wonderful thing. If we take a look at Harmony, uh, at the end of the week, what you'd really like to see is a uh, at least a close above 220. Now, you bought a 214. I'm sure you want to see a close much higher than 220. But the reason I give you the 220, $2.20 factor is because, and it's unusual to see this. When I do see this, the meaning that I have seen in the past is that uh, you have you are trading at a strong level of support. Now, that happens to be the TAS market profile weekly bottom of its box. $2.20. It also happens to match up with that point of control or center of the box, and so there is no real center of this box out here. So ideally, Brent, this should be strong support. 
Right now, it's been resistance. So on a weekly basis for the last three weeks, prices trade below it. So getting back above that you know, would have a nice meaning for you that you're really on the right side of the trade here. Closing above that on a weekly basis would then suggest to me that you would see 263 out of this. And then, as you're, you're exactly right, there was a nice little sign of strength yesterday, 9 million shares to the upside. And that's after making a uh, little bit lower low the prior day with 5 million shares. So all of that is good. You know, I think that the, uh, again, let's take a look at it from the upside. From the upside, you're going to find some potential resistance at its gap in that 286 area. So our first level to the upside, we'd be looking at inside of Harmony, 263, 286. Not that it can't uh, shoot higher, but that's going to be a resistance area that it hasn't been able to test. So we know that 220 is important, and it's resistance, and you're trading uh, at 222 right now. On a longer-term basis, let me just pull this back a bit. And so if this is going to move to the downside, uh, then what I would be looking at is probably just a simple retracement. Uh, this takes us back into November of 2000, 2015. And oddly enough, that the uh, low that it has formed here during the last month has been nothing more than a retracement, a 0.618 retracement at 219. You're in at, as you say, 214. So this could be... If so, to the downside, if it fails, price ought to go target the 0.786 retracement. That would be $1.46. And if this is the beginning of gold's, uh, or the miners, I should say, next move higher, then what this could really turn out to be longer term would be an A to B equals CD to the upside. We certainly had a nice bottom that formed last year, you know, in the uh, December time frame. So we're here right now. Uh, and you've only had a 0.618 retracement. Had you noticed that already? Yes, I did. And that's kind of why I tried to buy it here. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a that's an ideal spot if, in fact, because what this would, folks, is, you know, on that trade, then what Brent would be targeting more so long term would be the 630 type area. So he got 100 percent on rig. Now you're talking about a 300 uh, percent. But, of course, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I see the trade. It sure makes sense. These miners have held up. You know, the only problem has been. That as I went back and took a look at a, a chart, I don't know that I could find it that easily. I'll try to. I went back and I studied a chart, Brent, that looked at uh, gold versus the gold miners to see if there was some type of uh, clue, you know, because miners have been trading sideways to higher while gold has been trading lower. So I want to see, was there some type of clue out there where really the, the GDX in essence or the mining index was uh, really giving us a signal that uh, the bottom was forming. And unfortunately, this is actually the chart right here that's popping up on my screen. I couldn't find that divergent correlation that uh, that suggested that to us. So instead, it's like what this chart was telling me is just trade you know, the equity or trade the ETF based on it and don't be paying attention to the correlation. But, you know, there is a strong directional correlation between the direction of gold and the miners as well. So we can't just completely ignore it. Does that, that kind of help you out or? It does. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, willing to give it a shot here. I think it's an area that, you know, it makes sense to at least give it a shot. And if it, you know, it works out great, I, I'm giving myself a pretty tight stop on this thing. I'm not going to give it a lot. Okay. Okay. Well, that 220 is, is going to be the first key area as far as moving to the upside. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe we'll know something today uh, with regard to how the market is, uh, you know, sorted things out by the end of the uh, day out here. What I can say is that, um, you know, currency wise, and, uh, you know, we here at TFNN, Denners, yourself, you know, we do pay attention to that Japanese uh, yen. And what's interesting here, as weak as it has um, gotten, uh, when I take a look at the uh, CFTC data and look at what commercial traders are doing inside that currency, they're getting, they're ramped up to a fairly, very high level, not fairly, a very high level of being net short. So it's really going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. Um, you can't really use that as a timing tool, but they have not been, uh, they've been ramping up towards a uh, large net short position inside that currency versus the U.S. dollar. So we'll see how it all plays out. All right. That's interesting. I appreciate you sharing that, Steve.
You have a, no have a great day. It's always a pleasure talking with you, and you take care, all right? You bet. Thanks so much for calling. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Wouldn't that be nice to get a nice thrill 300 percent? That was long term, folks, because that was a monthly chart that we were taking a look at. But remember that uh, actually on the monthly chart, just to give you a perspective on time frame, that monthly A to B took between in this case here was November of 2015 all the way up into August. So you're looking at eight to nine month uh, type time frame if we were to see the same type of uh, move out here. So again, that was on Harmony Gold. Of course, there's going to be currencies that are going to impact that price of that uh, equity as well. So Dow's up 9.48. S&P is off uh, 15 cents. You know, when we get back from this break, I'll check on emails, but let's go take a look at the Dow, which, by the way, gave a TD sequential 13 count yesterday. What does that mean? Or where does price need to close below for that to really be active? We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The holiday season is here. And TFNN Salvation Army Tire Dollar Special is back right now. You can get a 25% bonus on your purchase. And 10% of whatever you spend will be donated in your name to the Salvation Army. The sale only comes around once a year, so don't miss out. Tiger Dollars are a great way to add extra savings to TFNN newsletters or services. And they never expire. Get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Thursday, December 22nd. And get your 25% bonus while donating 10% of your purchase to the Salvation Army. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so we were talking about, or I mentioned to you, the uh, Dow. We're taking a look at some of the indices and uh, things for us to keep an eye on. Um, and one of the indicators that you and I pay attention to is we pay attention to uh, Tom DeMarc's uh, counts out here. We look at the TD setup. Those are the black digits that are on my screen out here. Once you get to a nine, um, you can anticipate the market may change course. 
might be a top, might be a bottom. The uh, blue numbers are the ones that we're going to focus on during this segment right here because those identify uh, what he referred to uh, or refers to as his TD sequential count. So when you see a number 13, a blue number 13, and we have one that formed out here at near the bottom, not right at the bottom, but it formed on November 2nd. And then, of course, it was uh, four day, three days later when the market uh, took off, closed back above Stevie's oscillator on change line. And at this stage here, in the case of the Dow, never looked back, just simply came back and tested it, tested and rejected that oscillator on change line back on December 7th. And that's an important line of either support or could be resistance. Now, as we come into today's trading sessions and the session and the Dow Jones here yesterday formed a TD 13 count. Now, I gave you one of the clues. How will we, we have a confirmation that that uh, TD 13 sequential count is a signal, because it's an indicator, is a indicator or signal that the uh, trend has changed? Well, the way that we would determine that is we would see a close below that oscillator unchanged line. Now, in the case of the Dow right now, as we speak, that is priced at 19,691. Now, 19,691 is, um, it's not 300 points, but it's like 230 points or so below where we're trading right now. In fact, actually, that line would come down a bit out here. But it really wouldn't be until you see price get below that oscillator and change line that it would be a, that it would confirm the signal of that TD sequential count, that number 13. So again, the number to write down on your pad of paper for the Dow is 19,692 or in that range out there. Other than that, any pullback, don't buy into it that it is like it's the top. If the market responds poorly, let's call it the Dow at this stage here, you know, decides to sell off because interest rates are rising and because of whatever it is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Janet Yellen says or how it's really interpreted, right? It's not so much about what she says. It's how the market decides to go ahead and frame it. Frame it and interpret. It's all about framing in life, right? And uh, but uh, you've got to see. You need to see a pullback between less than to get below that oscillator change line, 19,692, for it to really have, in my opinion, for it to really have any kind of relevance out there. Now that's what the daily is showing us. If we try to figure out, here's a longer term monthly chart for the Dow. If we take a look at what's really taken place from the 2007 top, well, I got to grab the actual tool out here, the proper tool, and we look at expansions from the 2007 top down to the 2009 bottom out here, what we're going to see is prices above the 1.618. So last month, we poked our head slightly above it. This month, you've had nothing but follow through. Remember, we're still in that favorable seasonal cycle. This says to us on a longer term basis, as long as the Dow trades above 18,974, it has a chance of heading up to that next Fibonacci expansion level. Let me see if I can actually figure out what that is. I'm sure that I can. There we go. So you've got, you'd go to a level two, right? We take this to a DEFCON two. So let me put in DEFCON 2. Let's make that red and uh, 2, just 2. There we go. So DEFCON 2 of the, um, of the expansion from 2007 down to 2009 has got 21,926 painted all over it. Now, I know we're just focusing on, on the Dow here, but, oh, that was interesting. Um, but, uh, but that's an easy number. That's easy for everybody to take a look at. If I look at, again at the uh, three different time frames for our primary or horizontal trading range boundary levels, we know that the Dow is up and over a significant level here. Uh, it says it wants a price once dead to 21480 The monthly, that's its next stop. The weekly says 2459 The daily says uh, price wants to move up into the uh, 2195 level out here. So uh, the Dow is strong. Strong like bull, but the one signal, again, indicator, the one indicator signal that says just caution is going to be that, that TD sequential count out there. Now, there's one other indice that gave a, a TD sequential count signal yesterday, and that was the S&P 500. I believe it was. So let's go take a look at it. Let's pull over the S&P 500. We can do the same kind of uh, thing out here. 
let me get rid of the uh, wave counts out here because what we're focused on is that uh, yesterday was a, a TD 13 sequential count. You can see the blue number 13. Now, in the case of the S&P 500, unlike the Dow, in the case of the S&P 500, I had mentioned earlier about those TD setups, those TD nine count setups. And you can see that what the S&P 500 actually did when it formed its bottom back here with that little inverted hammer on November 7th happened to be a TD nine. Count. Now, the very next trading session, when price closed above Stevie's red line, that oscillator and change line, that was the confirmation of that Tom DeMarc count. Now, we're ready. we had a T, we've had two TD9 set. Have we two? Uh, we've had uh, one. We had one TD9 set. That was back on November 18th. But see, price never flirted with or moved below or closed below that oscillator on change line. It's really acted as support. There were two days, granted, December 2nd and December 5th, where price was trading just slightly below that level. But you got another nice confirming message on December 6th as price went ahead, moved above it. So the number there to be watching for is going to be 2247. Similar to the Dow in that you would be need to see about a 28-point move or so, 27-point move in order for price to get below that. But that's what you want to pay attention to is going to be that uh, 2247 level. Anything else in a move back is nothing more than a retracement in a strong like bull. You thought I was going to say something else, and I almost did, but strong like bull market in a favorable seasonal cycle out here. Now, with regard to longer term or what do our horizontal trading ranges tell us inside the S&P 500. 2261 is a level of resistance that is on the monthly basis out here. So uh, closing back above that level or staying above that level, you're at 2272 right now, says 2401 is what's written in the cards there. The weekly is above its midpoint. That's got 2367 written all over it. And on a daily perspective, we're now above its horizontal trading range boundary line. 2295 and then 2334 is its message. And if we switch back, to the main chart, the monthly chart we were looking at, we go look at the S&P 500, SPX out here, and we do the same type of expansion from the uh, 2007 high to the low in 2009. You can see, again, price clearly above the 1.618. The question I would ask you, is that bullish or is that bearish? Well, there is really only one meaning, and we're using the most, we're using the most meaningful sets of swing points out here. Yeah, sure. I can use the swing points from the highs in 2015 down to lows in 2016. But they are not, in my opinion, they are not as meaningful as the longer term. And right now we're looking at a monthly chart. So I would think that what we would want to do is stay with the monthly longer term mix. Let's go ahead and take a look at where that 2.0 level is inside of the expansion of those swing points. And that takes you to 2485. Folks, the S&P 500, I can't tell you how, why, when it's going to do it, but it's got 2,500 written all over it. All over it. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, quiet out there. Uh, no emails today. Interesting. Uh, if they are, they're going to a, a junk box. And if they are, I apologize for that. So we, I think we've really taken a look. I know we've taken a look at the S&P 500 and the uh, Dow out here. So easy for us to be able to track. They are the indices that have generated the, uh, well, the Wilshire 5000. I take that back. If I look at the Wilshire 5000 as well, which is really tracking the U.S. stock market out here. It, too, let me get rid of these uh, wave counts out here. Uh, it, too, generated a, a TD sequential count yesterday, 13. Now, the number to be watching here is going to be 23,537. So, again, what we have here is a rising, uh, I don't have it on this chart here, rising price oscillator. It's above zero. So, really, all is, uh, well, everything uh, points to uh, bullish uh, mode out here. And we'll see if uh, Janet Yellen or really, it's going to be how the market frames it, right? It's all going to be about how the market, and life is about framing things. I, You know, it's during the holiday season. You might find somebody that's down, you know, and if you do, that's really your challenge, to reframe it, to, to be able to find the gift in every set of circumstance. That's all that it is. I promise you, now I'm taking this a step further, but you, you, there are many people that, uh, many famous people that we know of, we may not have known them, but we know of in our lifetime that have, uh, you know, committed suicide, right? Or accidentally taken their life, you know, but how do you accidentally take your life? You have to kind of be pushed to the edge there. And I promise you that, uh, of course, you're going to say, how can I promise you this? But I, I got no other choice but to promise you that uh, those individuals just simply were not, did not have a compelling future thought on their mind. Their life just needed to be, you know, um, reframed. It's just about reframing. So if you find somebody out there that is struggling, you can find a way to reframe anything out here. And so we're going to find out how the market frames uh, what it is that, uh, you know, Janet Yellen, and we have we've, the last year of the whole political process, you have to know that if you were somebody that actually sat there and were diligent, watching the words from either uh, any of the candidates out here it was really all about the framing or the reframing of whatever was said uh that's what gets you so frustrated i'm sure when you might be listening to the media out here now uh, you know because you'll hear them say one thing without with you if, if you're i pound myself in the head i don't really do that too often but when i hear people miss 
frame the way that something was said. Now, what I try to do here is properly frame for you what the charts, what the technical analysis, what the different patterns are that we're taking a look at. My reframing may be different than somebody else altogether, but that's okay and provide you with reasons why. I just lay out the facts so that you can see, you know, in the past what has happened. That's why I take a look at the S&P 500 chart, seeing that TD9 setup count and then watching what happened with regard to Stevie's red line is just as important as now us being at a TD sequential count and watching what happens with regard to Stevie's red line once again out there. So I don't even know how I got onto that subject matter, um, but I did. And it's about the holidays. And, you know, hey, we've got a Tiger Dollar promotion that is out here. You know, let's make sure that that is properly framed. Number one, for those of you that uh, utilize services here at TFNN, there is no better time for you to do something for others. So whenever you invest in yourself, whenever you educate yourself, you know that that is really being done for all those others that you love in your life. You, you're there to protect their backs, and this is the easiest way to do that. And additionally, uh, you would be giving to others because of this great promotion that uh, Tom has where a uh, portion of uh, the proceeds are going to the Salvation Army out there. So, you know, make sure that that is framed in the proper way, which is you, you get a uh, you, you, you'd be helping yourself, you'd be helping your family and you'd be helping those that you don't know out there. So take advantage of that before the uh, 22nd when we've got about another eight days or so out there, you know, and you know, somebody's going to be buying you a gift. They're going to be wondering, you know, what can you they get for you? You probably already have everything. So, you know, have them be the contributor towards uh, towards your Tiger dollars, and you can put those to uh, good use out there. Okay, enough of that. Not that I really can get enough of that, because I could speak for days and hours about this, in essence, the psychology of trading, which is really the psychology of life out here, which is really just so important, which is really about, you know, uh, being able to meet the needs of others out there. If you want somebody to become addicted to you, I can teach you how to do that and vice versa. Then even, uh, eventually we'll get to some individual stocks out here. So let's go take a look at Nordson Corp out here. Nordson Corp uh, is out with uh, earnings. Uh, looks like uh, they uh, not not too bad. I don't know what Nordson does, but man, they uh, doubled. They almost doubled. Well, they, they did about seventy-five million dollars net income. Of course, you know a, any good bean counter might be able to help them uh, do that and get from fifty million of last year. So it's a a what is that a, a fifty percent increase in earnings out there? So uh, you know pretty uh, pretty good deal. If we take a look at what the uh, stock market or traders like about this, basically you'd have to say. Gosh darn near about everything. What does Nordson Corp do? Let's go find out. Uh, what does Nordson, what is, uh, shoot, uh, NDSN. Let's go see what these guys do. Probably I should know. Probably you should know. Guess what? We're going to know because we're going to go say see what their company profile is. So Nordson engineers, manufactures, markets, products, and systems to dispense, apply, and control adhesives, coatings, polymers, sealants, Biomaterials and other fluids out there. They had me until the other fluids thing popped up. But these guys are an adhesive company, like a 3 m -er out here. Where are these guys located? They're located in 440. That would be Westlake, Ohio out here. So uh, Nordson, everybody at their holiday party which I would say Christmas party, is kind of, they've got a 401k and they've been matching and so forth. Everybody here is in uh, heaven. And when we say heaven, this thing is basically at its all-time highs. And, uh, you know, talk about a big move. So if we take a this is a, again, the monthly chart that we're looking at. I can put a volume characteristic out here. Let's see if the if the B point of that A to B equals CD was taken out with volume out here. Not that it really matters at this stage of the game, right? Because, let's face it, it has moved beyond that B point. But that would be... Uh, I've got a couple of them that you could use. The first one right here, B point, would be April 2011. Six million shares out there. Uh, that was passed with 9.8 million shares. That was passed with uh, 8.7. So you had that nice confirmed A to B equals CD. This is the first one that was out here. It's gone ahead and it's made a second one. It makes the one-to-one. 
goes ahead and pulls back. How about that? The target of 85.38. It actually got up to 84.95. You got to like that. Here is a smaller A to B equals C D, and that's using that uh, original B point out here of August 1st, 2011, or August 2011. Coming up to the June 2014, pulling back into January of last year. Now it's at a 1 to 1.272. But notice the strength of this move here off of this C point. What does this communicate to you and I? This communicates to you and I that this move is still, or is still, has strength and has gargantuan strength. And so where Nordson, N-D-S-N, is headed to, all those people in Ohio, they've got to be licking their chops, whatever that means out here. <laughs> Ought to be, this stock ought to be heading for 130.90. That's its next move once it can clear the 114 even Stephen area. That is on uh, Nordson. So uh, that's the leader to the upside. You've also got leaders like uh, Williams Clayton Energy, CWEI, up 7%. That's $7. Charter Communications up 7 Lennox, not to be confused with Annie Lennox. What a voice, huh? What a voice there, Annie Lennox. But LII, that's up about 4% or $6. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin, as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs>
Welcome back to the uh, final segment, uh, folks. Before we uh, before we go into the uh, Janet uh, Yellen FOMC uh, releasing and telling us what they're going to uh, do, uh, as if it is a big secret out there, right? As if it's a big secret. In any event, a couple of questions did come in. Uh, one asking, hey, steve what's going on with Light Speed Crude? I, I sort of reframed that question out there, but uh, in essence, that was the uh, question. So if we take a look at the current contract here for Light Speed Crude, here is what we are going to be able to uh, determine. Number one, what we know is that, uh, hey, today, and I do mean today, there was a brand new TAS market profile that formed. Now, as we take a look at them and get rid of the pricing levels, that's uh, this uh, little blue box, these little blue lines out here, not a box, but these little blue lines. And the problem here with regard to this market profile is it formed inside this larger profile. So in essence, uh, the uh, box of uh, where price is being controlled has shrunk. But what it didn't do is it didn't form at a higher level, which is a bullish signal or can be a bullish signal. So with regard to what's light sweet crude doing, man, it's going to take a rest here. And what price has done today is it's gotten back below its weekly top of its box, 52.14. Now it's brand new profile high, 52.06. And as long as price stays below that, light sweet crude is going to go ahead and retrace. Now, maybe that's almost a foregone conclusion. You should expect the U.S. dollar index to get a little bit stronger, right, potentially, at least with regard to an initial reaction. So that would say light sweet crude, for those of you that want to buy it, looking at a daily chart, the price level to be watching now is going to be 5010. Uh, 5108 could be that's that center of the box and it's truly dead smack dab in the center so we don't really know who is controlling this pricing area. What we do know is price is back below a level of support and that says it could uh, go test which now becomes resistance and it can really go test support which would be fifty dollars and ten cents. That is what Steve-O says is going on with light sweet crude. The other question is is there anything else that we should be watching to get signals from the market as to what it wants and what it intends to do here. Is there going to be a change in a trend out here? I would say other than those oscillator and change lines that I provided to you because of those TD sequential counts, you would then, if, if price is really going to head to the downside, we're going to see some type of short-term change in trend the duration of which I'm not sure how long it would last. I don't think long. You would then pay attention to the VIX index and its 50-day exponential moving average being 1389. So 1389, that again, that's going to change by a few pennies. So that would be the number I'd be watching for inside of the volatility index out here. Uh, you've got the cash VIX, cash, cash spot trading out at 1279. The uh, contract, the forward futures contract going out to uh, July, right? It's July Q, Q. Q August, take that back, is August, is at 1974. There is not enough of a spread difference between those two to call a top. It says these two need to get a little bit further apart. Nah, not a little bit. Much further apart than where they're trading right now. So its, it's setup is actually bullish if we were looking for clues from the volatility index. So a lot of folks have noticed, and rightfully so, that we've been seeing the VIX index rising, which ordinarily you'd say, man, that's a sign of a top to have that uh, out there. And I would agree, although we've got to take into consideration the different market environment that we are and you would typically see this spread between the spot fix and the futures contract widen more out there. So, uh, folks, that's it. Stay tuned. It's going to be a fun day. On Wonderful Wednesday, of course, we've got our man, our polar bear. He's going to be up next. He'll properly frame for you what the market is doing, how it's behaving. And then we've got Tom O'Brien from 3 to 4. And by 4 o'clock, we'll know exactly how the market interpreted this message of the FOMC. See you later, folks. Have a great day.
Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up to the date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.